So we're in Madrid for the Fuse 2023 event. I'm here with Canis Mardi. She is Senior VP of Technology, Architecture and Innovation and Group Chief Architect at Deutsche Telekom and a board member at TIP as well. So a lot going on in your life there, Canis. Thanks very much for joining us. Now, here at the show, you uh, moderated uh, a session that was focused on uh, AI, which is, of course is one of the big topics in the industry right now. Uh, what kind of impact has the widespread availability of generative AI applications had specifically on the telecom sector? AI specifically, I mean, you could, you could talk all day long on what are the possibilities with Gen AI, but with the telecom sector, I mean, every industry, every enterprise is using uh, some kind of chatbot for customer service. I'm not going to speak to that. We are, our, ourselves, we have um, a chatbot, um, Frag Magenta, which is Ask Magenta, which ran about 5 million transactions uh, just last year. So I'm not going to speak to that, but uh, autonomic networks, and some, some call them autonomous, I prefer autonomic, the problem of control theory and using machine learning to drive and, and augment and optimize my processes inside my operations, that problem um, gets really very, very interesting uh, perspective by opening up the human to machine interface that Gen AI brings. Yeah, So it helps to broaden the possibility and the scope of the things I could do, the processes I could automate, and the efficiencies I could bring uh, to bear uh, as part of my roadmap development. So yeah, algorithmic AI will go on, but Gen AI really uh, opens up, um, I, I should say, the sky is the limit with Gen AI. Right. Marrying with algorithmic AI, yeah. So we're starting to see the, the fruits of those kind of developments right now uh, in some of the announcements from, from network operators around the world. But uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, AI isn't new. It's been uh, part of developments for years. So are there any particular areas where telecom operators are making significant operational gains from the use of AI already? Automation of our uh, processes, definitely, we are already reaping the benefits. So for example, we have about, uh, I, I have to read the statistics, I, I'm not very good at math, 70% um, of uh, automated ticket resolution already. Um, and then we have a 15% uh, reduction in truckloads across our EU segments, um, as well as our German segment has completely eliminated uh, the night shift for the fixed line access, which is tremendous improvement. Um, uh, as far as the human capital is concerned, but then also operational cost uh, and the truckloads and everything else, like, um, uh, the list goes on and on, yeah. So you've already mentioned a, a few areas where Deutsche Telekom is making use of uh, AI, but is there a sort of a, a, a broader palette, a greater perspective? I mean, you've actually made an announcement just this week, yeah. haven't you, uh, yeah. related to AI and some new applications and processes. So, so talking about the broader palette, um, now that we are looking to set up a long-term horizon planning for what could be the future of AI and the future of networks in the, in the world of AI. So what we are driving is two sides of the same coin. One we call AI for networking, which is the kind, kind of use cases that we just um, uh, explored a bit uh, uh, just now. But then expanding it with uh, focus, maniacal focus on data. So data still remains to be one of our key challenges to solve, not just as Deutsche Telekom, but as an industry. Um, so for AI for networking focus is going to be on creating the future data architectures which allow us to consume and monetize um, the data that is uh, living and breathing inside our operational networks without us even knowing what data that is. Yeah? So uh, that is the number one priority as far as the broader perspective is concerned. But then what makes me even more excited is the other side of the coin which is uh, networking for AI. So the concept or the idea or the thinking behind networking for AI is basically Deutsche Telekom and other networks. We are eventually moving, not away from or expanding beyond, I should say, 
uh, connecting things and people to things and people to helping them live their lives. And as AI gets more and more ingrained in our deep in our lives, uh, our lives are being automated without us knowing it. And Doshi Telecom wants to insert itself in that equation. So, I mean, because we are the ones who are closest to the customer. We are the one that the customer trusts. So we want to give them the freedom and the luxury and the sovereignty and the privacy that th makes them comfortable with the automation all around them, as well as makes them make use of the automation. So their lives are augmented with AI. But then when you look at augmentation of life at a grand scale, you really have to go grand, you have to go global. And um, going global has a, I mean, yes, one company, one telecom can try and do it, but not an easy feat. Um, one cloud provider can try and do it, not an easy feat. So, what we announced this morning, this morning was basically a multi-sector collaboration where we are bringing multiple access providers, and these access could be the fixed line or the mobile, marrying them together in a global nexus of compute and connectivity, bridging the various access networks across the globe using not just our service provider backbones, yes, of course, we will do that, but then we are also bringing in these hyperscalers and the internet providers who have the investments already in the subsea cables and whatnot. So basically the announcement this morning is AWS, VMware, and DT coming together. With We basically ended up stitching a data fabric across five different cities, Prague, Seattle, Bonn, Berlin, and Frankfurt. And I am able to, to, to have video analytics, my CPEs standing in any of these locations and I can do inferencing from anywhere in the world because the BGP connected RAN and the, the core network through the AWS gives me the time sensitive fabric that I need with 140 millisecond latency. Yeah, so, so the, the distance basically gets eliminated almost completely. Right. Um, so I'm giving you just an example. And when you have that level of close, tight integration between the hyperscalers and the telco and multiple telcos coming together, then yes, you go broad, you go grand, you go global. And that global connectivity basically becomes the essential underpinning of the fabrics of our lives that we will be living and breathing in in the future. So we're calling it DEAN, it stands for Distributed Edge AI Networking. And all it is is connecting multiple access networks, multiple backbones under the sea, over the space, and through the land to give all of us a framework that allows us to breathe and live in connectivity just as we breathe and live in air. So just like oxygen. Okay, and I guess as you know, we're hearing a lot these days about taking the next step to, to bridge the digital divide using satellite, using fixed wireless, using a new spectrum to try and reach more and more people and things. And as those are all connected, I guess then the intelligence becomes shared, etc., etc. So this is almost like a first step towards a a new kind of network of networks. In it is a network of networks indeed. It's a circulatory system that we're stitching across the globe, bringing in multiple networks so they are able to collaborate and help each other out. But not just to connect. No, but, yeah. the intelligence is also right. being coordinated and federated. So you have all the local brains, east, west, north, south interaction, guiding their own local infrastructures because we don't want it to be one party takes it all. We want it to be a win-win marketplace with distributed benefits all across the board. So each infrastructure provider, each software provider, whoever is contributing to this marketplace brings their asset along with their intelligence. Right along with the interfaces that allow these intelligences to talk to each other and work with each other and create a win-win or and the I should say the biggest or the largest beneficiary of all this is us, you and I. 
So that's the ambition. Let's see how far we go. Okay. Well, it sounds like a, a fascinating uh, development uh, and one that I'm sure is going to have an impact on the, on the strategies of other companies as well, make them think differently about how they're taking services and applications to their customers. So, Kani, thanks very much for sharing that with us today and, and joining us on Telecom TV. Thank you so much, Ray, for having me.